Welcome to the Techno Fundamental Report for January the 5th. If you cannot make money out of the leading active issues, you are not going to make money out of the stock market as a whole. Jesse Livermore, <clears throat> basically the growth stocks in 2022, well, it really wasn't a good year. We're going to talk about 22, what happened. Now, there's a term out there called Lazarus stocks, stocks that come back after being having catastrophic losses. Well, <clears throat> they're very few and far between, say it that way. Uh, Apple, for example, which was a liquid leader, is down 29% uh, in 22. Uh, we had uh, Amazon down 55%. In fact, they announced this morning they're going to be laying off about 18,000 people. NVIDIA down 67%. That's, that's quite a drop. Tesla down 73%, and they're having their share of problems. The thing that's been interesting about the year, though, was that even bonds, this is the 20-year Treasury, was down 39% because interest rates went up so dramatically. So there really wasn't a lot of hedges out there. You couldn't use bonds as a hedge. Even gold, gold was down 21%. So there just weren't very many hedges out there that you could have invested in last year that would have made a difference. So it's been a difficult year, no doubt about it. Now, you might want to pause your video player. I'm not going to read this whole piece here, but this is out of William O'Neill's book. And he talks about the myth of long-term investing and being fully invested. You know, there are times where you have to go to the sidelines, and this has been one of them. So you need to realize that, you know, being fully invested all the time may not be the best strategy. Mark Zandi is an economist. Uh, he has um, uh, been around for a good while. He uh, basically is saying in this piece here, and again, you may want to pause your video player, but he's talking about the yield curve and how everybody has become a slave to the yield curve, inverted yield curve. Zandi is of the opinion that we may not, he doesn't think we're anywhere close to a recession. He says that uh, you know, in recessions, the stock market generally drops about 50%. Well, the S&P was down about 20%. So he's saying right now that, you know, he's not seeing the signs of a, of a recession. So anyway, I went ahead and took another look at the yield curve, and I've decided to eliminate this indicator from our list, primarily because I just don't think it's applicable to the, to the stock market. I, I do think it has successfully called recessions in the past, but what Zandi is saying, Mark Zandi, who was the economist I referred to, he said that this has been a very unusual year for what the Federal Reserve has been doing. And so he thinks that this, the inverted yield curve, as he says here, he goes <clears throat> that, you know, the inverted yield curve uh, is, is flawed because of what's going on with the Federal Reserve. So we're, we're just going to drop this one. Now, I've also modified another indicator. You know, these indicators, which you have to realize, I've been using them for many years. And some work, some don't. And the ones that tend to not work is when everybody is focused on them. Well, anyway, this is the volatility index. This is the VIX. And what I've done is I've eliminated the, the VIX itself and only showing the 50-day moving average of the VIX. And as you can see, the VIX is trending down, which means that volatility is starting to you know become less of a problem. So what we want to do here is just be aware that you know like at the beginning of the year you had a, a, an ascending VIX kind of was telling you that the market was going to have problems. So that's how we'll use this indicator. We'll see how it goes. Now on one of our indicators here which is the NASDAQ you comparing it to the 25 and 50 day moving average you can see here NASDAQ continuing to just move sideways not really a whole lot going on there. Now, this indicator here, this is nothing more than the 200-day moving average. Uh, we can see here that the S&P is, is, you know, keeps challenging. We get these uh, what we call bear market rallies, bear market rallies, and it's, it's just continuing to struggle. Now, the NASDAQ's even worse. We're not even getting close to the 200-day moving average. Now, <clears throat> the indicator that I have really found to be the most valuable this, at this time is the aggression index. Now I've got two forms of the of the indicator here on this page. One I'm comparing to consumer staples, NASDAQ meaning technology compared to toilet paper. 
you can see here that this particular indicator started to, to break down uh, back in February of 21. But, you know, just kind of a small thing to notice here, but the, the indicator actually rallied off that, off that uh, downturn and then rallied and kind of gave you what I would call a head fake. Whereas I'm kind of warming up to this indicator here, which is we're comparing the NASDAQ to the S&P 500, which is a very simple ratio. However, you didn't get that head fake. You know, you broke down below the 10-week the, the moving average. You really never got going again, and then it broke down again. So I really favor both forms of the aggression index. It's an indicator that's been working very well for us. Now, on our three economic indicators, you can see here interest rates have just pretty much been moving sideways on the 10-year Treasury. Oil prices continue to stay in a downtrend. You know, oil stocks did real well in the first half of the year, but in the second half of the year really didn't do all that well. So just be aware of the fact, you know, everybody's high on the energy stocks because they did well in the first half. However, they're really not doing that well at this time. Financial stocks are showing a little bit of improvement here, got back above that 200-day moving average. Now, this is another indicator that I would say would be at the top of the list. This is a uh, number of new lows on the New York Stock Exchange. You can see here back when we really got in trouble with the market how many new lows they were. They're somewhat drying up and improving, but not enough to, uh, to have a, what we would call a buy signal. Now, I wanted to mention one stock. We're going to do a, a fundamental evaluation and a technical evaluation here. This is Dexcom. This company makes a glucose monitor for people that are diabetic. My mother-in-law uses this product, and it really has gotten her diabetes under control. Her insulin problem has pretty much gone away. It's, it's a great product. So you can see here the stock has been really moving uh, pretty sideways here. You know, in a market that's downtrending, that's kind of a big deal right now. But you can see here, it's like a Darvis box. If this stock were to kind of break out of this trading range on where institutional buying would be coming in, I think it would be worth noting. Now, if you look at it on a weekly basis, you kind of get a different picture here. You can see week by week, now, this, this low here back in the summer, then a rally, higher low, then higher high. And then we now have, you know, a higher low and would like to see that higher high. And also it broke a trend line uh, that it established. So the weekly chart looks pretty good. Now, always look at the numbers. And you know what we're looking for here is, a, is this company in good financial shape? Or do they have financial problems? You know, I was looking at Bed Bath & Beyond this morning. They, their stock is plummeting. And if you look at their financials, they're just terrible. They're running out of money. So you want to make sure that if you're going to make an investment, make sure that you're investing in a solid situation. So with uh, Dexcom, you got a nice little profit margin here of 10%, very healthy. Return on equity, you know, 9%, which is fine. Uh, the cash flow is positive, both levered cash flow and operating cash flow. So the levered cash flow means they're able to pay their debt payments, which they have $2 billion in debt, but also they have cash of over $2 billion. So it's pretty solid. Their, their current ratio is about 4 to 1, which means they're able to pay their bills. Uh, revenue approaching $3 billion. Revenue jumped 18% over last year, the most recent quarter. Income's up. This is a pretty solid-looking company. So if the market was behaving itself and we had something more favorable going on on the, the macro picture, this would be a stock that would be pretty much at the top of my list. So anyway, just keep an eye on things and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much.